Hey, God bless you, House of Praise family. Pastor Steve here, and uh, we're just getting together again today for a short period of time just to go over some of the things that God really has laid into my heart, a really important revelation that I believe that God has given me. I shared a little bit last Sunday morning as we got together, and uh, the Lord is really leading me to share it again uh, here today. Uh, I just really want all of you to be able to grasp this, and I hope that everybody will take just a few minutes out of their day just to listen to this message from my heart to yours. And uh, we're talking about the importance of of having joy, a supernatural joy we're talking about amidst all of these challenging times. We have been, I think, very faithful in covering the issues and talking about all the issues uh, over the last, I think, five messages that I brought you. And I sent you an email which uh, outlined all of that. So go over that. And uh, if you would like to listen to any one of those messages, they're all available on YouTube. And uh, while you're on the YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe as well and hit the bell so that you will always get all the new messages that House of Praise puts out. But today, the Lord is really moving on my heart to talk about some things that I think really are life-changing. I mean, we need supernatural joy, and that's what we talked about a little bit last Sunday morning, and let's cover a few more things here today. Uh, you know, we get happiness and joy confused. And uh, I've often mentioned that. I think that's a really important thing to make sure that we don't get them confused because happiness is uh, can be easily defined as contentment, satisfaction, delight, all of which are wonderful, okay? When you have a lot of money in your pocket, you're happy. If you don't have enough money, you're unhappy. If you feel good in your body, you're happy. If you don't feel good in your body, then you're not happy. Uh, if things are going well at home or at work, uh, you're happy. If, if things are not going well, then we're unhappy. And, and that, that's happiness. It's circumstantial. It's based on what's going on in your life. It's based on what's happening. And uh, uh, it's based on happenings, so to speak. So happiness is relative to happenings and uh, how true that is. Uh, but but joy is different. I, I, I really see joy, and I believe the Lord's given me this revelation. When I think of joy, I think of ecstasy and euphoria, uh, rapture, uh, uh, you know, uh, acceleration, something that's supernatural, something that's coming from a different source. And that's what the Lord really made clear to me. This is clearly a higher level of being lifted up in the human spirit. It's clearly a different way. It's a higher level of lifting up in the human spirit. And from a biblical perspective, I believe joy springs up from within the soul and is not really relative to what's going on around you at all. And it supersedes circumstantial happiness and as it is coming from the source of all life, okay? Joy, supernatural joy, is not coming from what's happening. It's coming from a, a source of life. And of course, that's really important to understand that. And of course, we know the source of all life is Jesus Christ. You know, our, our transcendent God operates outside the realm of time and space. I, I even shared that with you in a text I sent out to you today. And uh, of course, we're confined uh, to time and space, but he is not, okay? And uh, that is why supernatural joy can be manifest in our lives uh, in the realm of what? Difficulty and disappointment. Even though that's going on, we can still experience that supernatural joy being lifted up in our soul because it springs from a different source. It's coming from the realm of what the Lord showed me is eternity. It's the eternal realm, which is the cornerstone of all logic and reason. When we see things from an eternal perspective, it changes our viewpoint on everything because we're seeing things through the eyes of God. We're hearing things through the ears of God. We are feeling things through the heart of God. Everything changes when we approach things and see things from an eternal perspective. 
any time that we lose sight of eternity, when that comes out of our view and we lose sight of that, we are bound to come up, uh, I would say, to temporary or maybe a, a false conclusion or something that isn't right. And then, of course, that causes us to make bad decisions in life because we're making decisions uh, based on bad information or, or incomplete information, let's put it that way. As a source of joy comes from the source of life, then joy belongs in the realm of the supernatural. That's why we call it a supernatural encounter with God. Joy is different than happiness, okay? And it's, it belongs in the realm of the supernatural or what we refer to as God showed us, the eternal realm. Let me talk just a little bit about joy and the supernatural right from the word of God. Uh, you know, angels rejoice at an unbeliever's repentance or conversion or acceptance of Jesus Christ. We read that in Luke 10, 20. It says all of heaven, all the angels rejoice when one sinner receives Jesus Christ. You don't need a whole church to get saved. You don't need a whole stadium to get saved, as wonderful as that might be. And we don't need a whole town to get saved, as wonderful as that would be. But if only one just one receives Jesus Christ, then all of heaven rejoices. That's supernatural. That's something that we can't even process in our mind. It's really hard to even understand that. I mean, it's something that I'm talking about millions and, and millions upon millions upon millions of angels that are partying. You know, uh, God rejoices in redemption. And there's a number of examples of that. I think, in fact, in Luke 15, we see three examples all grouped into one chapter. Okay, upon finding the lost sheep, the shepherd rejoices. Amen. The woman rejoices over finding a lost coin. Think about that. That's also in Luke 15. You need to read Luke 15. And then, of course, the prodigal son. We all know that story so well. Okay, his return brings rejoicing. And we know that that's more of a story of the father than it is of the son. But it is an incredible example of the excitement and uh, and the supernatural party, and if you will, over the redemption of one person. Amen. God's kingdom is described as righteousness, peace peace and joy. We read that in Romans 14, 17, certainly of salvation. It is a cause for joy as the disciples are what? Commanded to rejoice that your names were written in heaven. That's when Jesus was training some of his followers and sending them out two by two. And they were coming back so excited because they said the powers of the devil are bowing to your name. Amen. They saw miracles. They saw healing. They saw people being raised from the dead. They were excited about that. And then Jesus said, well, that's wonderful, guys. And that's all really good. But this is what you should rejoice in. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven, written in the Lamb's book of life. That's in Luke 10, 20. And of course, fellowship with Jesus always brings continuous joy. I always say this, that any connection with Jesus Christ at all, any connection at all, even the smallest, even the most insignificant or smallest connection with Christ will change somebody. You will see a difference in, in someone's attitude, their countenance, their level of joy, their perspective. Everything changes if you have even just a little connection with Jesus. I mean, the more fellowship you have with him and the closer you get to him, the more glorious the walk gets. It's so incredible. So I, I guess my question is, what are we waiting for? I believe the Lord gives us opportunities for joy all the time. I believe there are things in front of us. There's fresh new opportunities to find joy in front of us all the time that many times we miss because we're so consumed with the difficulties. We're so consumed with what's going on in our life. We're so consumed with what the news media is saying. We're so consumed with what's going on in the world. And it is incredible what we have faced the last three months or four months since February, March time frame on, and then what has happened in the last three weeks with all of this unrest and rioting and things that have, have, have come into our, to our nation. I mean, this is incredible. So we need to find that supernatural source of joy, that connection with the Lord Jesus Christ. Regardless of what's going on around you, 
you can experience this. I have experienced it. Now, I'm telling you, sometimes I lose the way. Sometimes I, I get frustrated. I have those moments where I have to repent and ask God to, to help me to get back on track again. I lose sight of the eternal, the eternal realm. Sometimes that can happen and you can become so consumed. That's why I have warned you against getting so consumed with news media. I have really warned you against that because I know that can really consume you and consume your attitude and all of a sudden your attitude can drop and, and get sour and then you become angry and bitter and, and all those things happen and, uh, and that's not necessary. We can live above this. We can live above this. We can take the high road. We can do this. And that's what I'm talking about here today. There's a few key secrets in the Word of God, and I'll share them with you quickly here today. One of them is the Bible has a lot to say about how you think. As a man thinks, so is he, okay? So it's a really important thing to understand that the battle is in the mind, okay? Within the soul, within the emotional structure of, of a human. Remember, we are not just human beings having a temporary spiritual experience. That's not what we are. We are spirit beings having a temporary human experience. That's who we are. This earth is not our home. We are passing through, amen. Let me give you a couple of scriptures that will really give some solid foundation to what we're talking about here. And I want everyone, oh, I, I, I just trust that everyone watching this video right now can grasp this so that their life can be changed so that they don't have to live down in that, in that lower that lower level, so to speak, and waddling with the turkeys. No, we can fly with the eagles. Amen. Deuteronomy 30 and 19, it says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you choices, life and death, life and death. And we've defined life for you and death for you. And we're not talking about, when we say death, we're not talking about caskets, flowers, rigor mortis. We're talking about anything that comes from a, a source of death, which would be the enemy and the devil and the powers of darkness. We need to be totally and completely set free from all that. We can be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and still be oppressed with these things. We need to be set free, and that's what's going to happen here today. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you the choices of life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, my recommendation to you is today, choose life, choose blessing, choose joy, choose those things that God has all prepared for you and he's all set ready to just pour that into your life jesus said i have come that ye may have life and have it to the full or have it to abundance abundant life that's what we're talking about here therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live this will have a major impact on everybody around you your family your children your grandchildren the church family i mean you can really impact a lot of people every person impacts hundreds and hundreds of people sometimes even thousands so it's really important to understand the impact of what our attitude has on others like if we come into church on a Sunday morning or if we have, you know, uh, an attitude in the home that's sour and, and everything's down and you're angry and bitter about everything and upset about whatever, whatever is going on, that can impact so many other people. But yet this spirit of joy, I'm talking about this supernatural encounter with God. Supernatural encounter with God. Now, Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, uh, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. This is so important. I'm going to have a renewed mind today, not just on a daily basis, but I'm talking about every hour on the hour, as often as you need it, you need to have your mind renewed. I need to have my mind renewed. Amen. And as I have my mind renewed, it makes such a huge difference where I can recognize what is good and acceptable and what is the will of God. And then we can start walking in his will. Amen. Walking in his wisdom and not straying out of that eternal 
eternal realm. As soon as you stray out of that, remember, you're making decisions in your life on either incomplete information or wrong information. We need to stay in the realm of eternity, the eternal realm. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen, 2 Corinthians 4.18, where the things that are seen are only temporary, but the things which are not seen, they have eternal value. Amen. 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given me a spirit of fear. God has not given me. When I see someone just racked in fear and, and, and paralyzed and unable to move, unable to function, that's a spirit of fear, and it comes in many different flavors. But God hath not given us a spirit of fear. That never came from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That comes from an encounter with the works of darkness. Amen. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's what God has given us. A spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Corinthians 10.5, casting down, this is important, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity. In other words, making a decision to guard your thoughts, guard your heart. Listen to your pastor, guard your mind, guard your heart, guard it intentionally. Guarded intentionally. Amen. This is so important. Casting down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against what God has said and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The Bible has a lot to say about how we think. And how we think has a lot to do with our ability to live in the eternal realm and get our source of joy from that well, from that well of Jesus Christ. Amen. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are what? Honest and uh, just and pure and things that are of lovely and are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And the word of God is so clear. Uh, and also in Proverbs 23, 7, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And that's the first part of the seventh verse. Amen. I've given you a few verses out of the Bible here on this day, and, and we're going to focus on this. I believe the Lord wants us to focus on this over the next period of time. I'm not sure. I'll just wait on the Holy Spirit each week and each day. And each Sunday morning, we are just looking to the Lord because we know how important this matter is. Amen. Because when we lose sight of this, when we come disconnected from this supernatural source of joy, that's when all the bitterness and anger and depression and discouragement and all those things start setting in and it can totally destroy us. And that's what we got to be very, very careful of. I see that happen so many times. And the Lord wants to set us free. Amen. But I hope that you will see the truth behind these timeless truths, these timeless Word of God. I'm going to call it timeless Word of God. The Word of God suggests that you have a significant amount of control over what happens in your life. You have a significant amount of control over what you think and, and what comes into your soul. You have a lot of control over that. For example, you know, we can control, I've often said this, you can make your Christmas anything you wanted to make it. You can make your Thanksgiving anything that you wanted to make it. You can make your birthday or every day or make a Sunday as, as powerful as you want it to be. Amen. You can walk into the sanctuary with a with a bad spirit and a, red, a bad attitude and miss everything that God is saying and doing on a Sunday morning or on a Thursday night or even if you pick up the Word of God and get nothing out of it. There, there is something there that we need to be on guard against because that's how the enemy will try to steal what God is given to us and wants to give us so bad. He just loves us so much. And do you know that worrying is a total waste of time? I mentioned this on Sunday morning, and I'm gonna give you a definition here. Worry is a conversation you have with yourself about things that you can't change, where prayer and intercession, worship, time spent in the presence of God is a conversation that you have with God about things that he can change. See the big difference there? Let's, let's finish up now in Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen. 
Paul had to repeat it because he just wanted to drive that point home. Let your gentleness be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. He's close by. He loves us so much. And he's got so many good things planned for us. All the plans that I have for you are good so that you will have a great future and an exciting bright future and I'm just I'm excited for all of you for what God has in mind for you the Lord told me this morning that that he was listening to you pray and he was so intent in listening to your prayer that he actually asked a few angels to stop singing for a few minutes so that he can hear your prayer Oh, somebody would say, well, come on, Pastor. No, no, that was just, that was something that God gave me so that we as humans can relate, so we can relate. That's why Jesus came, so that we could relate to the Father. Amen. And that's what God gave me there, some, uh, some simple way that we could relate. Amen. He wants to take you into a realm, that eternal realm, where you can have this supernatural joy, which comes from a different source than what you see and feel around you. Amen? Amen. All right, and the peace of God. No, no, let's go to the sixth verse first. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. I think I'm going to stop right there. I believe that's what the Lord has told me to, to share with you today. And uh, I'm just excited. It's a beautiful day out here on our back deck. And, and uh, it, it's a little bit more humid today, but it's still a beautiful day. And uh, we're just enjoying the presence of God. I trust that you are in whatever it is that you're doing. You've got to remember, your source of joy is not based on what's going on around you. It's not relative to happenings. It's not relative to what's going on in the world. It's not relative to what's going on in the state of New Jersey. Nothing can control or steal what God has for you. Amen. He's very interested in every part of your life. If you have a health issue right now, God cares about your health. I'm telling you. If you have a money issue right now, God cares about your money. He wants to redeem every part of your life. But most of all, he wants your soul to be blessed with the joy that we're talking about here. Supernatural joy. God bless you all. We'll see you again soon sometime. And uh, we're going to have Thirsty Thursday this week. I trust that you will join us and in our midweek and then, uh, of course, next Sunday as well. And uh, God is good. Listen carefully for his voice. I love you. Take care. Bye-bye.